I've had a lot of comments, a lot of requests from people in this group about, I don't have anything to post about, and I don't know what to post, I don't know what to say, nothing I have to say is of interest to anybody, and so what am I going to post about to attract people who'd want to buy what I have? And I want to show you one of many, many, many techniques that I use, and one of them is I am an avid reader. I really like reading. I read, I would say, a book between a half and a whole book a week, and I usually have two or three going at the same time. And I know that some of you may not have that kind of time, but you need to read something every day for 30 minutes, regardless, even if it's a Bible. I mean, it doesn't need to be a marketing book. It can be any anything really where what your focus is, is number one, calming your mind. Two, getting some sort of inspiration. Sorry about that noise there. And three, getting something actionable that you can do during the day or a way, a mindset that you can react differently to the problems, the people problems and the your situation problems that come up in anybody's life during the course of the day. Okay, so that's really, that's what reading is for. It's to give you perspective, to give you new new energy, a new point of view, instead of running to brush your teeth and then turning on the news, which is mostly noise and very upsetting to many people politically and, you know, crime and all this. I mean, I never turn on any of that stuff anymore because I can't stand to hear it. There's nothing you can do about it. That's the big problem. And it makes you feel bad and helpless. So that's even worse. And then you go to your day whether you go to your work or whether you deal with your kids or whether you're trying to get people in the business and you're starting in a completely place of total upset. So I would be really careful what you allow into your head, into your mind. And, you know, one of the things that I learned today is that the entrepreneur Andrew Carnegie, who was the richest man in, what was it, early 1900s, I think, he said we need to have a, a diet of food. And then he said, we don't only need a diet of food. That is, you need to know what you put into your body if you don't want, you know, crap in, crap out, right? But we also need a study diet. So a, a, a diet of books, things that you read. Now, in those days, they didn't have computers and Facebook. But today, you can read books online. You can read audios online. You could do podcasts online. So I'm suggesting that you not only think about what you what your daily diet should be for what you eat and drink but a daily diet for what you study so that you learn the kinds of things that turn you into the kind of person that you want to be so if you want to learn about marketing the book i'm going to show you that i use was just an example to get posts from to show my followers these are things that you can do i didn't even invent it i happen to agree with it but i use the book and i want to show you how to use a book that you want to read about your niche or about your business so that you can use the content to support or to augment your own point of view or to give a point of view that you agree with and use that as a quote, as a starting point. And then you can talk about it a little bit, okay? So here's how you do that. So how to get a following by looking smart and sharing your smarts on Facebook. Now these smarts don't have to be starting with you. So three steps, here we are. First of all, read books. You can read them online. Like I said, you can do Kindle books. You, I like a lot of paper books. I'm so sick of looking at the screen. The good thing, though, with Kindle and paper books is that you can highlight. And the books I want to show you tonight are I'm going to highlight. Read books, take notes, or highlight. Okay. Next, teach what you've learned that touched you somehow. However it touched you, it doesn't matter. So long as you were touched, you're like, oh, they need to know that. Or, oh, I didn't know that. Or, oh, I didn't even think that. This is like such a cool thing I got I to gotta tell right away. Whatever that is, do those things, okay? Do things that touch you in one way or the other, and then teach that. One point for each post or email that you send. Don't have a post that's got like, here are the top nine things. People are going to skip right over it. Nine things? What, are you crazy? Nine? Don't do more than three on anything. Maximum five. And I usually have one main point, and if there were to be five anythings, it would be, Five things to know before you sign up for a network marketing company. So what's the main point? Signing up for a main a network marketing company. What are the five things? Five things to know before you sign up for one, right? 
So it's not five things that are completely unrelated. It's one big thing. And here are five things you need to know before you sign up for a network marketing company, for example. So that's what I mean by one main point. All right. So I want to give you an example. Read books, take notes, teach what you have learned that touched you. One main point in your post or your email. Okay. So today I want to show you the book is in the black. Sorry, I was sitting in an Uber and it was dark. And I thought, oh, I got to give them the cover of the book. So uh, I took the picture in the, in the back seat there on the dark. Just a few minutes ago, the one page marketing plan. That is the name of the book. Okay. You can get that on Amazon and read it. It's a marvelous, marvelous book. It's completely consistent with everything that I teach. And I mean, I'm glad the guy wrote the book because it's the, basically the, <laughs> the 2019 or 18 version of the of the orange book and more modern so it's perfect the one page marketing plan so this is the name of the book so i have this book and i'm reading it and in the first couple of pages the introduction notice this is the introduction that's my highlighter there every book i have has a highlighter clipped on number one to tell me where i am and number two uh, so i can highlight what i'm going to write about and what i want to talk about so this is the introduction to this book. Hopefully you can see that, you can read it. So he says at the beginning of this book, what is this book about? And here's what he writes. If I had to summarize the essence of this book, this is not for the post. This is me giving you background of how I decide these things. Okay. And you'll have your own method. If I had to summarize the essence of this book, it would be the fastest path to the money. Okay. That's what he says. And he says, I put this as early as possible because I don't want the wrong people basically to read this book. So he says, if you are somebody, there are people who prefer that there should be a book about, he calls them ear tickling cliches, like follow your passion or work hard, uh, hire the right people, blah, blah, blah. He says, if that is what you're after, then search Amazon. There'll be plenty of business books there for you. And for all these airy fairy, he says, concepts, and much more, mostly written by professional authors and researchers who have never actually built a high growth business. So what is he saying? This is for people who are looking for the quickest path to the income, not the airy fairy, follow your passion, hire the right people, love on everybody. No, he's, he, he's saying that right there. So he's going to turn off a lot of the people who don't want to deal with money many of whom have none, by the way, that's why <laughs> they often don't have money because they don't want to do anything for money or say that they want to do anything for money. There's a whole field of study that shows that the more you say, oh, I don't want to do this for the money. Oh, I don't do this for the money. It's just, I really just, you know, love the people. It's, I'm all passionate about the, whatever it is you're doing. Money won't come to you. So you keep right on talking about how you don't do anything for the money and money will not come to you and you'll stay poor as long as you're, you, you say those things and have those thoughts. A whole school of study on this uh, that Dan Kennedy made very popular. All right, so this is the flavor of this book. It so happens that I'm very much in agreement. Not that you shouldn't be passionate about who you help. That's what motivates you to do the work that you do. But if you don't think about the income that you need to earn and what you want to charge for helping somebody else out of a jam, and depending on how big that jam is, that'll determine how much you earn. If you go to, I don't know, um, you want your lawn raked, let's say, and you put out bids, you probably have 20 people come who will do it for, I don't know, 50 bucks. Maybe you get 100 people to come because it's not a very difficult job to do, right? But if you want to have a brain tumor removed, uh, there might be one or two people, and one of whom is the best in the world, and it's going to cost you, I don't know, $200,000. And you have to take out a second or a first, a new first on a home or borrow it against your life policy. In one case, you spend all the money that you have and do whatever you have to because the problem, the stakes are very high. It's you're going to have a brain tumor or you're not. You're going to be blind or you're not. You're going to walk or you're not. You're going to have a memory or you're not. So the stakes make a big difference, obviously, in how much you can be paid. So if you are in a place where you're helping people with stuff, where you think it really can make a difference, you can charge more money and not be worried about the fact that it costs a couple hundred bucks a month, which a lot of network marketers worry a lot about. Oh, it's so much money. It's like, yeah, right. Uh, for, for, because it's not high stakes to that person, you see. So if you're talking to somebody about, say, your, your, your weight loss program, 
and they don't really want to lose weight that much or it's not a priority right now, no matter what you charge, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks a month, it's going to be too expensive. Why? Because the stakes are not high for that person at that moment. You see, but if they had to fit into a dress in six weeks for the wedding of her sister and you had a program that probably could lose it the fastest, suddenly the stakes are much higher. The timing is urgent. And now she's willing to pay 800 bucks or whatever for six weeks worth of meal replacements, let's say, to make that work. You see. All right. So this is just to give you this is the take on money that I have that many network marketers, most of them, particularly women, don't want to say that they're interested in money, so they say the opposite, right? Like money isn't everything, money is the source of all evil or the root of all evil, which isn't even the right quote, it's the love of it that is the problem. So what I did is I found this book and I thought, oh great, he is going to be just my cup of tea. So what does he say about money, right? Remember, my position is women in particular need to start thinking about, they need to earn some money and so they need to think about how to position themselves so that what they offer to someone else that they compare having it versus not having it and find people who want that thing and who without that thing will be much worse off than with that thing do you see what I mean so that's what you want to do and to do that that allows you to charge a lot more money you can say well say the cost of the program is I don't know 500 bucks but if you don't do it what's the cost of that well you should have had this conversation which is that you're going to get fatter and bigger and all for all you know in a, two years you're going to be so big you can't even I don't know make babies anymore you ain't, can't even get out of your chair anymore you need to walk or wherever you go because you're big as a house or even worse you might get uh, diabetes and you might lose an arm or a leg so what price do you want to pay the 500 bucks now to get started and get yourself into back into health or do you want to pay the other price of staying the way you are and getting worse and worse and worse? For a person who doesn't want to get worse and worse and worse, they'll pay the money to, to stop the problem now. You see, so these are the balances. So you don't have to talk about how much money you're charging. You talk about the pain if they don't have it. And so you want to find people to talk to for whom it will be a pain. And so this is what you lay out during your conversation with them, which is what we teach in the YES program. All right, so Zig Ziglar. So we have a, a wonderful quote here that says, Zig uh, Ziglar famously said, money isn't everything, but now notice the rest of his, He because he was hedging his bets, you know. But it's right up there with oxygen. Okay, so I could write a quote. I could write a low post and say, money isn't everything, but it's right up there with oxygen. Then I could add this sentence here. See the highlighted? Nothing kills a business faster than a lack of oxygen, AKA money. So I could take this quote and say, uh, money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen and give the quote, I'll show you how I'm gonna do this in a minute, give the quote to Zig Ziglar. And then I could add another quote, nothing kills a business faster than lack of oxygen. Okay, so that's making, establishing the fact that without money, we are dead. See, that's that you have no business. If you can't get people to buy your stuff, you don't have a business because you don't have any customers. Without customers, that's why people go bankrupt and companies go bankrupt, okay? So on the second page of this book, this one's, I took this here just a few minutes ago. He says, there is no business problem that cannot be, that can't be solved with more money. That's a fact. So I could make this quote, there's no business problem that can't be solved with more money. Just copy paste it, you know, and put it up there. Which is handy because almost every business we know is full of problems. Money helps you solve the vast majority of things that make your business a pain in the backside. Secondly, this is where I would use this quote to target the women who feel like they need to take care of other people. They, you know, you get the people pleasers and then the people who feel passionate, we have to help them and we want to give it to them and there's the, all these poor people that they say this part. Um, that they want to help other people. But the part they all forget, this group I'm talking about, which I would target these posts to, is that when you have taken care of yourself, then you have a chance to help others. Well, you see, if you're of the mindset that money is, it isn't everything, I don't really do this for the money, I just do it to help people, you won't get any money. Because you don't. 
That's just kind of how it is. Talk to people who say that. People who say money's the root of all evil, money isn't everything, I don't do it for the money, they have none. And it'll say exactly like that. But you see, if somebody wants to say, well, I want to help people, how are you going to do that if you're broke? Abraham Lincoln said, you know, the best thing you can do for the poor is not join them. Right? So we have to get our thinking straight. If you want to take care of other people, you better have something, some way to do that. Because you're not a church. You don't have, you know, you could become a church, make enough money so you can set up your charities. So I could take these quotes. So for example, I might say, what might I do? Let's say that I want to write a post about, I mean, I can write a post about any sentence in this book. Give me any book. I can copy paste any sentence and write a post because I'm just a lover of other people's knowledge and experience and their biographies and their stories. And there's always something, you know, we're all just human. So it's a wonderful thing to do. Here's another one. Make sure that your own mask is on first before helping others. I've used that example for probably 30, 40 years about the, you know, you're on the plane and they say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, on Southwest, I'll tell you years ago, I used to fly that airline <laughs> and I, they used to have these funny, stewardesses and stu stewards, I guess is what they call them. But they would say, if there's any turbulence, put your own oxygen mask on first and then help children and people acting like children. And why is that? Because if your own mask isn't on, you're going to be dead yourself. You'll be a dead weight over whoever's trying to climb over you, you know? So you have to take care of yourself first. And you cannot help others if you haven't taken care of yourself. And if you feel like, remember, you have this idea that money isn't everything, money is the root of all evil, I don't really do this for the money, I really just help people, blah, blah, blah. You're screwed. You will, the money will not come to you. So these are problems in thinking that keep a lot of very good people who want to help others back and down and out. So this is what the post would be about. So I could say, I could probably take this quote, money isn't everything, but it ranks right out there with oxygen. So I could maybe do a post and say, I'd start with the quote, right? Money isn't everything. I was going to post this on my Facebook for you, but I can't because this thing only takes an application, which is this one. Money isn't everything, but it ranks, I would get this exactly right, but it ranks right up there with O2. Okay, let's say that that's what we say. Okay, so this would be the beginning of the quote. And then I would say, Zig Ziglar. Okay, and then that would be the quote. And I would lead my post with that, right? Money isn't everything. And then probably what I would do is find a mugshot of Zig Ziglar. I'd go online, you know, Google and say Zig Ziglar image. And I'd find something that I like and drag it into my post and put you know, mug his mugshot right there so they would know this is him. Money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. Uh, and then I would take the quote that said, nothing kills a business faster than a lack of oxygen. Or what I could do is say, hmm, I would say Zig adds. Um, what did I say he added? What did he say? Um, oh, no, he doesn't. The author adds, nothing kills a business faster than lack of oxygen. Okay, cool. The author of this book that I'm talking about, this orange book, nothing kills a business faster than a lack of oxygen. Okay, and then I would say, do you have enough money coming? When pe you know, network marketers don't like money. They don't like that word because money's bad, right? This is such a, it's such a, I mean, culturally, it's without money, you're, it's like oxygen. You really are dead. You have to get used to it. But I'd be, I'm sensitive to the market. So uh, do you have enough money? Do you have enough income? That seems to be an acceptable word. Do you have enough income coming in? Okay, that's not going to go too many coming. So say, do you have enough, let's say customers, do you have enough, here's what we can say, paying customers, do you have enough paying customers 
to quit your job let's say so this could be one angle do you have enough customers to quit your job or I might say I think this was a search and see money isn't everything mm -hmm. do you have enough thing do you have this is this one I'll put it this way do you have trouble asking your Uh, perspective customers to pay you for your products do you feel like they work but they're too expensive Okay, this is a big issue. I've got countless people who post on the wall and say, well, our, our products are really good, but I think they're, they're kind of too expensive for people. What are they doing? They're telling me they think the products are too expensive. They probably wouldn't buy them if they weren't selling them. And so they're projecting this onto the customers, which means the customers aren't going to buy, right? So this is an is issue, right? Do you have trouble asking your prospective customers to pay for your products? Do you feel like they work, but they're too expensive? Would you like to know a way we teach our private high end clients how to overcome this how to overcome this block so that you can ask and and get the get the right people happy to hand over their credit card okay so you see how this works so this is an example I thought I'd just give you a taste this is how I write stuff you're looking at it here and then I would say now we need to have the so-called CTA right call to action right in fact what we'll say is if you'd like a live on this say live on money please and if I get say 10 requests I'll do one okay so this is how this is done that's it like this okay so this would be the post this is an example of a post it's kind of a tough rough draft but you'll see how this works okay so money isn't everything but it ranks right up there with oxygen I would spell this out Zig Ziglar X this would be the author of the book that I just said he adds nothing kills a business faster than lack of oxygen now I go to my readers do you have trouble asking your prospective customers to pay for your products do you feel like they work but they're too expensive would you like to know a way we teach our private high-end clients how to overcome this block so that you can ask and get the right people happy to hand over their credit card if you'd like a live on this say live on money please and if I get 10 requests I'll do one okay you see how this works you got it this is how you do this and you can do this you know with any book this one book this particular this is a marvelous book I recommend each if you want to make dime one in the industry of marketing and sales whether you're network marketing something or whether you are selling an affiliate product or your own product get the book and read it and you will discover many things in there that are that you didn't even know were blocking you and he will show you how to unblock it and then you have people like me who read stuff like this why because they there are way more ideas out there than there are in my head but I have certain beliefs because of my own journey and I can see from my 
really thousands of students all these years what is blocking people. And this one thing, when people say out loud, oh, I don't, money isn't everything, money, I don't do it for the money, and I'm, mm, uh, no, not, I don't, it's all passion and caring. This one perspective and saying this and having this come out of your head keeps money from coming to you. And then the very thing that a person wants to do, my students all want to help others, see? But how are you going to do that if you can't take care of yourself? And you need money to take care of yourself. So you cannot have this attitude about, I don't do it for the money and it's not everything, it's not anything, it's really not important because it's as if the money can hear this, see? So you're kind of cooked, right? So what is my post? If you're cooked like this and you got this screwed up belief and you didn't even know it, would you, do you, and because of this, you have trouble asking your prospective customers to pay for your products because, you know, they're kind of too expensive and you, you kind of, maybe I'll just give it to you. Could I give it to you for my cost? How about that? Oh, I'll just give it to you and then after that you could pay me because you're just so chicken to ask for the money, right? Because you have these beliefs about money that the whole, believe me, all of the Western world is brought up with idiot beliefs about money because normal people don't have much. So... They hate on everybody who does because they must be bad people because we don't have it and they do. And that's just not true. It's just bull. Of course there are bad people, but there are bad poor people too. Hello? There's some percent of bad everywhere. Rich, poor, in between. It doesn't make any difference. There are marvelous people who have money. Marvelous, marvelous people. They're just as giving. And when you think there are these poor people like Mother Teresa, what a sweetheart. She was not a sweetheart. To the nuns that she worked with, she was one hard taskmaster. If any of you ever have read any of the stories of the nuns in her care, so to speak, she also was not poor. They got hundreds of thousands of dollars every week. You're all just sheltered. You have no clue about any of this stuff because we just believe what our parents tell us. I'm here to tell you that you earning a lot of money means that you are making a lot of people's lives better. That's what it really means. That's why these companies make a lot. Granted, some of them go off the deep end. Granted, some of them go and get drunk and do bad things and whatever. But so do all humans. We're all cut from the same cloth. So if you want to truly be this person here in this book, you want to help others, you have got to take care of yourself. That means you've got to get over this idea that money's a bad thing because it won't come to you. Money's a good thing if you earn it making somebody else's life better. Is that clear to everybody? I mean, I should hammer it in right here. Yep, good. Well, that's what I have for you. And if you would like to see how we could maybe help you do this in a big way, you can come to at the bottom there, see where it says maxout.com talk. If you have seen some of the videos about what we do in these programs, in the main program that we have, I mean, you can book a time to chat and we'll see what your problem is and if we can help you make some significant income so that you can do exactly this. You can help others because you can take care of yourself, right? Or if you haven't really learned anything about how we do this with people because it's quite a mental transformation you go to mybigwakeupcall.com maybe somebody could type that in the in the in the group there go to mybigwakeupcall.com and watch that video it'll show you the five mental shifts that we use and that people come to see which allows you to get a whole new perspective so that you can do this very thing take care of yourself by helping other people who want what you have, and then you're in a position to help others even more. You see that? Okay, so you type it in there. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Amy. Yeah, and then the, the mybigwakeupcall.com, and then we're set to go. Was this helpful? Did you love this madly? And what I'll do is I'll put this post up tonight so you all can see it, okay? And you see exactly, I'll put it in this group. And then I'll put it on my, on my regular profile page as well. And I'll put the images so you can see what the final copy looks like. This is how I do it. You just saw the process. Okay? See you next time. And if you like this video, thanks a lot. Let people know. They can come join this group. It's on the house. And we teach something every week that we hope is of some use to you to get your attitude and your perspective right and get your wallet filled up a little bit and your bank account filled up a little bit, give you a little confidence so you can strut down that street. 
and be that person that you're supposed to be. All right? All right, this is Kim Claver. See you soon. Bye. Hey there, this is Kim Claver, and if you like this a lot, we have some other fun stuff for you at a website called oldandnewnwm.com. That stands for networkmarketing.com and, of course, marketing.com. So if you'd like to see some of the goodies there behind the curtain, go ahead and click on that link or type it in, oldandnewnwm.com. Opt in, and we have some goodies waiting for you on the other side. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming. So happy you enjoyed this. So happy you stayed. Hope we can help you. We sure would like to. Thanks. Bye.